So one word on Sierra, if you haven't heard of Sierra, uh, Sierra Circuits has been in business for a while. We've really made a name for ourselves for high technology product and also making it easier for the designer to um, you know, get feedback on any issues they might have uh, and you know, preparing the design for manufacturability essentially. Uh, so yeah, these have been very trying times uh, for our company over the last three years. And so we appreciate all the support that we're getting from our customers and our vendors um, and our PCB designers. So thank you very much for that. I myself have been doing this for a while and I try and learn something new every day. This is a quick uh, table of contents for today. Uh, so we'll go uh, over some very basic things about, you know, layout considerations for HDI, why HDI might be better for you, better suited for your design. Uh, some material selection um, considerations along with a demo of our material selector tool. Um, stack up considerations along with a demo of our stack up tool. And, uh, you know, so on and so forth. And honestly, ask questions because that also guides the presentation. I want you guys to get the answers that you want, uh, you know, from this. So what's really key here is to know why would you consider HDI in the first place, right? So. HDI is a technology that's been around for a while and there are still, uh, there's lots of good reasons to use HDI and there's lots of bad reasons to use HDI. If you're designing, if you're a layout designer and you're having trouble breaking out your design and then you add another two layers to your design and you keep adding layer pairs to finish your routing, that is the wrong way to use HDI. The best way to use HDI is to plan a little bit ahead of time and visualize your stack up. And that's why we have a stack up tool. Make sure your stack up is manufacturable and then design to that stack up that you've created. And a lot of our customers, they standardize on some stack ups once they're comfortable with them. And that's a great idea to do. But sometimes every design is very unique. So it's important to know what kind of structures you can have in HDI. So here, you know, the first kind of picture is you have a blind via from layer one to two, and then you have a, what's called a skip via from one to three. So that's possible to do with uh, laser drill microvias, but really we encourage laser drill microvias from just one layer to the next uh, and no more. So microvia is like the number one, I would say characteristic of an HDI, what defines HDI is an HDI board, which is a laser drilled microvia. The other things that describe uh, HDI is having high performance, thin dielectrics and fine lines. Um, and then also some considerations about signal integrity as uh, we will discuss. But basically the idea is that if you have a tight or densely packed board that you want to reduce the number of through holes uh, because through holes are hard to register harder than laser and you can have quality issues with your through holes in terms of drill the coppers and through holes take a lot of space or real estate uh, so you need larger pads and you know that takes up real estate in every layer Whereas a blind via or a buried via only takes up real estate on that layer pair. So another kind of consideration that you can have is use your top and bottom layers as ground planes and the adjacent layer as a power distribution layer. So the ground connection to the component pins can be made directly on the outer layers and the connections to the power distribution layers can be made uh, with the microvias. So, and then as you're deciding your stack up, you wanna make sure you have effective return paths. Uh, so that's always a very important um, consideration in your stack up and your layout design. 
So blind beans can be placed on the inner layers to provide the additional breakout space, um, you know, and then that way center to center distances on inner layers can be adjusted to offer more room for your trace routing. I think people call it channel routing as well. There's also a, a technology called VNPAD, which is has really um, exploded in terms of usage. Uh, we do that every day on many, many designs because of assembly related uh, concerns. So VNPAD is also a good option. In terms of material selections, um, we do have a lot of information on selecting the right PCB materials, but basically you choose um, materials for electrical, thermal, and mechanical properties. Um, mechanical properties are very important. And then also material selection as it relates to um, high-speed design or microvias, uh, you want to pick the right uh, glass styles and resin content for that as well. Uh, you want to make sure that you have a proper CTE. Um, so let's say if you have a large BGA um, or an LGA, you know, you want to make sure that you're picking the right materials for that assembly application. Um, and then uh, I mentioned this already, but you would like, it's better to have tight glass weaves uh, than not. So we have a material selector tool, which allows you to see what are the alternatives you know, based on your ranges of electrical performance, you know, let's say you have a DK or DF requirement, uh, you can compare materials uh, in that vein, as well as using your the slash sheets or slash numbers.